Just as League Issue 33 sees Shane try to reach out and feel for his father, telling him that Luther has six of the seven forces and the League are trying to stop him across time, but everything feels so disconnected. He calls out to his father as the Sons of Perpetua confront their mother and Apex Lex, who gloats that Hawk Girl can't breach his shield. Perpetua tries to convince her children to join arms with her, but the Monitor says they will join arms, but not with her, but against her, and with each other. Linking arms with his brothers, the Monitors and the Forger begin to emanate power. Perpetua calls them fools, since while they can contain the powers of their domains, they can't shape it without the totality. Forger says that his mother is wrong since they have Starman, who fires his powers onto them, telling them to hold off Perpetua until he re-establishes a connection with the Justice League, and once a portal is open for them, Kendra needs to activate her wings. The brothers' powers all converge, transforming them into the Ultra Monitor, defender of the multiverse and all its aspects. Perpetua tells Luther to kill them, but Kendra confronts him, planning on beating Lex to death with her mace. In 1941, the Justice League and the JSA travel deep into the ocean on a submarine, led by Aquaman, who says that if they have any hope of getting their fragment of the totality, they need to get to Atlantis. Starman finds the existence of Atlantis stunning, as Dr. Fate confirms Atlantis is definitely real. As Aquaman warns Wildcat that the mermaids he wishes to romance are very dangerous, Flash asks what at Atlantis can help them get back to the present. Arthur says that in present day, Starman needs to find them first, so they need to call out to him through hypertime, and only the conch of Arion is powerful enough to do so. Barry wonders how exactly Arthur is alive, learning that when he fought the Death Kraken, he thought he was dead, but was saved at the last minute by the Anti-Monitor, who knew a piece of totality was hidden in the past and tasked Arthur with helping the League to retrieve it. Jay says that none of that made sense to him, but Barry sort of understands it as Alan and John Mimo talk about their emotions. Alan implores John to talk with him since bottling up emotions can be dangerous. John says that thanks to what he saw at Pearl Harbor, he has found himself wondering exactly what his lantern oath means, since he thinks they aren't any closer to the brightness in their own time than they were here, and people are still sliding to doom. Alan says that most evil is based on fear and anger, and maybe the brightest day and blackest night aren't external things, but they're inside everyone, and being good is a constant, and it's less about what's reached in one, but more about the fight itself. In the future, the Trinity and the Justice Legion A battle Brainiac 1 million, who has a weapon to combat each of them. He says they cannot win and resistance is futile, while Commandi watches the fight, remembering Wonder Woman's words about help, realizing it's just a matter of time, quite literally. As he rushes off to find help, the Ultra Monitor battles Perpetua, who says that her sons cannot hope to defeat her. Kendra meanwhile fights with Lex, noting that the all-powerful being is starting to sweat. The angered Lex says that he is the apex predator and he was wondering where he should mount her head. Kendra smashes him in the face with her mace as Lex begins gloating about John, saying he can hear his pathetic shrieks. Kendra activates her wings as the three sons of Perpetua know that power is what created the Source Wall. Forger knows it won't be enough without the Totality Fragments or the Justice League. Starman says that Kendra activated her wings too early, yet Kendra thinks that it will be enough power for the teams once they get to them. Lex uses his Martian shape-shifting powers to combat Kendra as she conjures up a mace with her power, hitting him in the face with it, saying its power will be enough to end him. In the past, the heroes make it to Atlantis and are quickly apprehended by the Atlantean Guard. Arthur tells them to stand down and that they are to be taken to the King as Sinestro contacts the rest of the Legion, saying that they have found the League and the JSA and wants his team to make sure their prisoner is ready. In the future, Brainiac has caught the Trinity, saying across time all of the allies of theirs have failed and they won't be returning to their own timeline. Brainiac wants their piece of totality, but Wonder Woman says that they don't have it and it's out of his grasp. 
Brainiac knows that they have chosen death as the JSA and the League wait for King Poseidon. The guards refuse to talk to them, but Arthur tells them that he is their king's heir, blowing open the throne room and presenting their prisoner, King Poseidon, who is under Cheetah and Sinestro's command. Not only that, but the past version of Vandal Savage and his Legionnaires Club have arrived, telling Arthur that Poseidon has ceded his authority over to them, and if they hand them the totality, the heroes might be allowed to live. In another future, Commandy talks with someone, telling them that the heroes battle a great threat, but they are failing. But now, in the face of great disaster, he sees a different message. One that says that the fight won't be fought alone. It's revealed he is talking to the Justice League Beyond of Earth-12, who say that they understand that Commandy needs more justice this time. Justice League issue 33 continue the action-packed crazy hyper-time traveling event by pitting our heroes against even more insurmountable threats. Seriously though, the heroes are just constantly being thwarted at every turn and I love it. I just love the futile nature of it as I've said in past reviews. But of course the heroes never give up and Scott Snyder does a fantastic job of riding their will to fight on, especially with characters like Alan Scott and Jon Stewart, who get a wonderful little moment this issue talking about the meaning of the Green Lantern Oath and it's a new type of meaning which is really great and good on Scott Snyder for doing something like that. The ending with the Justice League Beyond team has me super excited for the next issue and has me wondering what else does Scott Snyder have in his back pocket. I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10.